There are some key differences between the different Tesla models available, and it's important to understand them before you choose which one is right for you. Before I get started, I want to give a big shout out to Wonder Capital for supporting the show. Wonder Capital helps investors like you and me earn up to 8.5% annually and fight climate change at the same time. Now, when a business wants to go solar, they need financing typically, but banks really don't understand how to help them. So Wonder Capital steps in, gives them the financial tools they need to switch over to solar and help fight climate change. As an investor, you can start with as little as $1,000 and earn up to 8.5% annually. Wonder Capital takes no fees and deposits your returns directly into your account. So if you want to diversify your portfolio and help fight climate change all while supporting small businesses, check it out at teslanomics.co slash wonder. That's teslanomics.co slash wonder with a U. Okay, let's get the show started. Hi, I'm Ben Sullins with Teslanomics, and I'm here today to be your guide and help you understand the differences between the different Tesla models available and which one is right for you. The first thing to think about is the difference between the Model S, which is their full-size sedan, and the Model X, which is an SUV. Both of these are fantastic vehicles, and if you need more seating than five adults, you're gonna have to go with the X, or if you have a lot of stuff that you are regularly hauling around, you're probably gonna to wanna to go with the X because it does have a bit more storage than the S. However, the S still has a tremendous amount of storage compared to most vehicles on the market today. You may also wanna consider parking. I live in Southern California and parking here can be really tight. So the Model S itself is a full-size sedan, so that alone can already be a challenge and sometimes an SUV can be really difficult. So that's another factor here, but really I would say the difference between the two models is gonna be the storage requirements and if you need seating for more than five adults. One really interesting feature of the Model S is that you can get it with rear facing child seats. These are behind the, the back row seats and they're facing outwards through the hatchback and they're reinforced. So they're actually built into the frame and cannot be added after the fact or removed if you don't want them later. So this is something that I've heard from friends that have it is a really fun, great feature. And because it's made up to be part of the frame, it's really safe as well. So this is a feature that you're gonna have to choose before you make your purchase. Now the Model X is a bit more versatile when it comes to its seating arrangement. There is a five, six, and seven seat configuration, all that give you different amounts of storage capacity. The five seater is essentially the same seating arrangement as the Model S where you have the two captain's chairs up front and then the row of three seats in the back and then nothing but storage behind that. This is your most spacious option where the back row actually does fold down and you have just a ton of storage back there. The other option is the six seater where essentially you have three different rows of captain's chairs. So there's just two in front, two in the middle, and two in the back. And the back ones do fold down. And then if you need seven seats, you can get two in the front, two in the middle, and then three in the back, where the back does fold down again, giving you an ample amount of storage. Now for all Tesla models, current and into the future, a big factor is how far you will actually be able to go on a single charge. And this is directly correlated with the size of the battery. So the size of the battery is measured in kilowatt hours. A kilowatt hour is a measure of energy capacity. So how much energy can this battery store? There are many other factors like the weight of the vehicle and aerodynamics and all kinds of other things, but really this is the big one. So when you're looking to buy a Tesla, you'll need to make this choice up front. You need to choose it in the very beginning before you make your decision. The smallest battery you can get right now for a Tesla is a 75 kilowatt hour battery. In fact, they've taken away the smaller options and they've taken away everything in between the 75 and the 100. Now the 75 kilowatt hour battery will get you 237 miles on a Model X and 248 miles for your Model S. Now these are estimated ranges, meaning you won't always get that amount. And in fact, you only charge the car to about 80% on normal times to reduce stress on the battery. So you'll get far less than that, at least 20% less range on a normal day-to-day -day basis. But hopefully 200 miles plus is still enough to get you through your daily commute in most situations. This really becomes a factor when you think about going on road trips. 
So if you go on road trips for work, maybe every quarter or once a year to visit family like I do in Phoenix, that's where it really matters because if you have to stop multiple times, it can really add a lot of time to your trip. So for example, when I go back to Phoenix over the holidays to visit my family, I have to stop three times because I have an older model, I have a 60, which goes just about 200 miles on a charge. Now, if you look at a map, that's not quite enough to make it all the way to the halfway point, which would be Yuma. And then it's also not enough to make it from Yuma all the way to where I need to get to in Phoenix. Phoenix is a very large place, kind of like Los Angeles. And so I have to stop three times on my way there, even though the total trip is only about 400 miles. And so that adds almost two hours to a four hour drive, which is already kind of long. Now, if it were just me and my wife, fine, no problem. But when you have a toddler in the back that's not too happy about what's going on, it can really make it a long trip. One great thing though about Tesla and road trips is that they have this supercharger network, which is really strong in the US and Europe and China and all over parts of the world. And it's just getting bigger and bigger. Now for older Tesla owners or for the previous owners, these are free to use, unlimited. You can drive literally from San Diego to New York if you want, totally for free using the supercharger network. And you can go charge up during the week or whenever else you really need to. Now, they are putting limits on this though. So if you're buying a new model, you're only gonna get 400 kilowatt hours of free charging every year. That's still not bad because that adds up to almost a thousand miles of driving, which hopefully is, you know, a good amount that covers most people. Beyond that 400 kilowatt hours of free charging, you are gonna have to pay something, but it's really minimal. It's usually whatever the effective rate per kilowatt hour is in that area. I actually have another video I'll link up here where you can go plan out your trip and you can go check out and see what it would cost. Now, the way supercharging works is it goes from about zero to 80% in about 30 minutes. Then from 80% to 100% is another 30 minutes. And that's because the way supercharging works is it's like pouring water into a glass. When you start out, the glass is empty and you can fill it up really quickly. You can just dump the water in and no issues. But then as you get closer to the top, you have to slow down that pour so that way you don't spill any. The good news is though that Tesla will figure this out for you. You get in your car, you plot in your route, it tells you which chargers you need to stop at and how long you need to stop at them. So you may not have to charge fully every time depending on how far you're going. A lot of Tesla owners will tell you that you should just go for the biggest battery you can possibly afford. And yes, if you have the money and you're not worried about it, get the biggest battery they offer, which as of today is the 100 kilowatt hour pack. And so if you can do that, great. But I argue that it's almost not worth it in a lot of cases because going from the 75 kilowatt hour battery to the 100 kilowatt hour battery can cost almost $30,000 more for the Model S. Now for the Model X, it's a bit more reasonable. It's only $17,000 different, but still that's a lot of money. And really, unless you're going on a lot of road trips and you need that extra range, you're not gonna really utilize it that much. So really you're paying for something that you're just not using. So that brings us to price. And of course this is a big factor and probably a good constraint for a lot of folks. And so Tesla has a great tool for this on the affordability calculator here. The affordability calculator will allow you to punch in your monthly budget it and then see which models fit within that. So that's great. And I would encourage everyone to go do that before they really just dive in and decide which one they want. Because this I think is really important for a lot of folks not to overextend themselves and get into any kind of trouble to be irresponsible. Buy a car that you can afford. And so if these are all completely out of range, then forget it. But I will talk about some other ways to afford a Tesla here coming up. Um, if you know the, the base level $70,000-ish is, is way outside of your price range already. So yeah, you're you're looking at about $70,000 to start and you can configure this thing all the way up to $150,000 though. So uh, it's not for the faint of heart. and It's probably the most expensive car that a lot of people are going to buy. Now let's assume though that you've already figured this out. You know which car you're going to get. What else do you need? Well, the most important thing that you really need from day one is some way to charge it. And for a lot of folks, they have a garage and a home and you can just charge it there. But there are a few different options about home charging that I wanna show you. You can install a 240 volt outlet called NEMA 1450 
and use the mobile connector which comes with your Tesla. The other option is to install a Tesla wall charger. Now, the wall charger is a unit that you have to buy from Tesla, and it is similar in that it can charge your car, but it can do it a little bit faster. Now, depending on your needs, most people, or you don't really need that extra fast charger at home because you're gonna come home, you're gonna plug it in and let it sit for hours and hours overnight charging. But if you do need it, there are some additional upgrades you can buy from the service center and even some upgrades you can do to your Tesla to allow it to charge faster from that same outlet at home. This can get pricey, however. At my house, I had to run the electrical line about 90 feet from where the electrical panel is to where my garage is. And the cables and everything are pretty heavy duty, so it's not cheap at all. In fact, this cost me about $1,800 to install. And then I just plugged in my mobile connector and I'm able to charge every night. Now, it's super convenient, and in fact, this is one of the big benefits of having an electric car, Tesla or otherwise, is that you never have to go to a gas station again. You never have to sit in line or deal with any of the other things going on at the gas station. You just wake up and your car's ready to go. Uh, for some folks, if you don't have a car that gets 200 plus miles, you're gonna need to be really on this and really focused on charging uh, quickly and often at home. But for most Tesla owners, this really isn't an issue. In fact, I'll go days without charging. So it's something you absolutely have to have from day one, something I would recommend getting installed beforehand. And after you make your reservation for your car, for your Tesla, they'll actually connect you with some people to help you figure this out. So uh, you can get it done pretty seamlessly in most areas. Now, there is one exception to this. What if you need to charge and you don't own a home or have a garage? This is where things can get a bit tricky. So a lot of folks out there that maybe own a condo, you can work with your condo building and a lot of them will set this up for you or allow you to install it. Uh, but there may be some cases where the HOA or the Homeowners Association or whomever won't let you do this, in which case you're gonna have to find other charging solutions outside of your house. And this can be a real pain. Now, of course, you can charge out in public spaces such as superchargers or other public charging infrastructure, depending on where you live. However, this can damage your Tesla. So with this, I hope you know now the basics of what you need to make that decision and choose which model is right for you. Now, I didn't wanna leave here though without giving you some other options for more affordable ways to purchase the Tesla. And namely, I'm talking about the certified pre-owned program. This is how I bought my Tesla and you get the, the royal treatment, the red carpet, the whole works, even though you're buying a used model. So don't feel like you're being discounted in any way or get any different kind of treatment. They really do a fantastic job of this. So. When you buy a used Tesla from them, you often will get free supercharging, but you're gonna be missing out on some of the other features. And I'm gonna do another video down the road about what those features are specifically, but the big one is autopilot. This is really convenient for things like stop and go traffic, so you don't have to constantly be braking and accelerating and dealing with that. And it helps a lot with keeping you in the lane in case you're tired or anything like that. It's a good safety feature. And of course, we're looking at full self-driving right around the corner. So my guess is that a lot more cars with autopilot are gonna become available through the pre-owned program. And lastly, I couldn't leave out the Tesla Model 3. We are right around the corner from this being a real thing and people receiving the real production versions. In fact, I'm hoping to go to the delivery event coming up here in July. But I didn't wanna go into too much detail because we don't know everything about the car yet. But what we do know so far is that the car will get at least 215 miles of range on a single charge. It's fast and it's gonna go from zero to 60 in under six seconds. It's a five-seater, a smaller sedan, sort of like a coupe, but still a four-door with a good amount of room on the interior. It'll be supercharger enabled, meaning you can use the supercharger network. However, you may have to pay for all of your usage there. Still pretty affordable compared to some of the other options, but it won't be the free supercharging like the Model S and X older versions have. And it's designed to have a five-star safety rating just like its other cars. So there's no doubt in my mind that this will be an extremely safe car. And of course, the most important thing, the base price is 
$35,000. Now, I left this out because you're at least gonna be waiting a year if you wanted to order one today. And as more details come out, I'm gonna update this video and this series to keep you informed about where it stands and whether or not it's the right car for you. And if you wanna have a bit of fun with it, I did build a calculator to help you estimate when you may get your Model 3. So I'll link a card up there and it'll be a link in the description down below so you can go check out that estimator tool. So I'd love to hear what you decide. Are you gonna buy an S or an X? Which options are you gonna choose? I'm gonna have more videos on this helping you break down every single option and figure out which ones are right for you. This was just a high level overview so you can understand the differences between the models and what are really the core things that you need to consider before making your purchase. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing and stay tuned for those coming up. And if you're already a member of the family, please give us a big like and share this with everyone you know. As always, you can get on our email list at teslanomics.co and have these emailed direct to your inbox. You don't have to worry about coming into YouTube to miss any of our awesome content that we make. So thanks for joining me and don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow.